I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. Inspired by the life of the savvy and ambitious Colombian businesswoman Griselda Blanco comes a new Netflix original limited series. Griselda tells the story of a devoted mother who, with her lethal blend of charm and relentless savagery, creates one of the most powerful cartels in history. Witness Sofia Vergara's captivating transformation into the godmother of the underworld. Griselda, now streaming only on Netflix. ABCs. Welcome to the Bare Naked ABCs, where we discuss every Bare Naked Lady song from 7 to Y. Last week we discussed a song that we said was fun and childish. This week we are discussing a children's song. We are discussing La 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 Lemon. La 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 Lemon. La 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 Light Bulb. I guess. La 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 Lamp Post. This is fun. La 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 In My Oatmeal. I think we're almost there. I just I was thinking more sort of you know lovely lilting words that that start with L, like this. La 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 Laughter. La la la. Did you get yeah, it? That, yep, that, you that, got it. How many L's did I, laws did I get in there? You did awesome. <laughs> it's not three and it's not five. No. <laughs> and as you can hear, joining me this week, I have Stefan and Eric. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Hello there. No problem. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah. It's three songs in a row now. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad to have Eric on board. I think Jeff asked on uh, keeping it real when I'm becoming permanent. I think it's starting. <laughs> <laughs> Seems that way, doesn't it? And, I, and he said that, that he, you couldn't take his job. And yeah, here he is, second week in a row, not here. He's Jeff, not here and I am. So, <laughs> hi, everybody. I'm the new Jeff. <laughs> hi, new Jeff. <laughs> you can send the trailer. You can send the trailer to Calgary, Tracy. Okay. Sounds good. You're in Calgary? <laughs> I am indeed. Wow. I've it's always Cal- wanted to go to Banff. Maybe I can stop in. <laughs> I I am on that side of Calgary. Yes, you are. <laughs> well, well, Stephen, we need we need someone to bring the trailer over, and I'm not getting over state line over ca- country lines. That's for <laughs> no. sure. Well, with your probation and everything, so we're not letting Americans in right now, right? Yeah, I'm on the no drive list. <laughs> Absolutely. Plus, you've got that little ankle wristlet. Not not for anything you've done. It's yeah, just to put this. Uh, podcast in time. It's not because Tracy's done anything. It's just Corona. <laughs> <laughs> he drinks way too many Coronas. Well, and they don't want me. They don't want me crossing that line. They're yeah. <laughs> stay in the U.S., please. At least Canadians have good taste. As Eric nods his head, yes, please stay in America, Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're discussing the song La 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 Lemon. I do not know who wrote this song. I do know, or at least can guess, that it was one of the writers for Sesame Street, because that's where this song comes from, is from the 1971 skit on Sesame Street between Bert and Ernie. That's older than me, by a lot. (laughs) I looked it up, uh, looked up the lyrics, and it said the songwriter is Joe Raposo. Thank you, sir. There you go. Did you Google Joe Raposo now? No, I did not. No. I'm not I'm that it. advanced with the Googles. I'm on it. <laughs> He's a composer. Best known for his work on Sesame Street. Oh, there which we he go. wrote the theme song. Oh, nice. Ooh, wow. They're pulling in the big guns for this one. He also wrote <laughs> Be in Green, which would be... Uh, Kermit's major yeah. song. It's not easy, yeah. being green. C is for Cookie, which would be... Uh, oh, oh. That's oh, I thought staple. it was for something else. That's okay. that's Big Bird's song, right? Oh, Big is right. 
So that's that's Joe Raposo in a nutshell. I'm that, sure there's more, but I just read the first paragraph. That's pretty amazing. He's written some pretty big <clears throat> songs over the years. And I have to say, when I heard this, I was like, I know where this comes from. I, I remember this skit from Bert and Ernie. I remember the original... And then also they remade it like 20 years later as well with, with the puppets all over again. Yes, because heaven forbid they don't use the puppets again. <laughs> of course there was a puppet. Well, they had newer versions of the puppets. And so they mm. looked nicer. And so they did a... Because oh. I, I don't know if you've noticed, but Bert used to have the unibrow. He no longer has a unibrow. He doesn't, does he? No. Now he wow. just has the Eugene Levy br- eyebrows. Oh, just, nice. Uh, like we that. love you, Eugene. Please come on the show. We know you listen. Yeah. <laughs> where Where did Sesame Street interview you to get their ideas of your eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> they also did a version of this on the Dick Cavett show. And wow. that's all I have about this song. I don't have a ton about this song. Um, I do. Who did? b and well, there's the B&L. No, the B&L version was not on the Dick Cavett show. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think he was dead and long gone by that point. Oh. <laughs> so B&L recorded this in 2002 for the album For the Kids. And all the benefits of the song go to Sarah McLaughlin's Music Outreach Program, which is a unique school offering free music education to inner city youth in Vancouver. Oh, I love the Commonwealth. And also the money went for the album itself to the Save the Music Foundation. Um, And they had five covers of Muppet and Sesame Street songs on this album. Some of them actually have become quite famous since they've been released. For example... Cake's version of Manamana. Cake? Which is <laughs> really? Manamana. Which is the lead version of the lead song off this album. <laughs> Manamana. And uh, I love that version of that song. I do, do too. Do, 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 do. <laughs> it suits Cake so well. Oh, they do amazing with it. So uh, which song did Celine Dion cover? <laughs> uh, My Heart Will no. Go On. <laughs> no, from Sesame Street. <laughs> Celine didn't cover it. Sarah McLaughlin did. She covered Rainbow Connection. Oh, ooh, fancy. I, be- I bet Celine could do it better. <laughs> sorry we know you we, we love you sarah please come on the show celine is the greatest singer of the world <laughs> and you're probably celine, we love you sarah. too please come on the show <laughs> you two can join us on the same show yes same episode. Great. the the all canadian stars episode and you can both sing rainbow connection and we'll decide who the better singer is for that song <laughs> That's true. I can't. I cannot make that voting choice. I'm. I'm a Canadian. I'm not allowed to make that choice. No, you, you're not allowed to choose between the two. Um, also on this album was uh, Guster singing "I've Got to Be Clean," another Bert and Ernie song. And or actually, that's just Bert. Um, and I don't re- recognize most of the other names nor most of the other songs. Although Tom <clears throat> Waits did do Bend Down the Branches, but I don't recognize the song. They do have Five for Fighting on here, singing the Hoppity song. Not sure what that song is. Um, and Darius Rucker singing It's All Right to Cry. Once again, don't know that song. Huh. Darius is great, though. Yeah. Oh, I love Darius. And Sixpence None the Reacher singing Good Night Children Everywhere. Good night, children. They probably don't say it just, like that, do they? <laughs> that's just the <laughs> ending of the album. Just to put all the little kids to bed properly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Rainbow Connection right into Good night, children. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> you know, if Anthony Hopkins said that in his Hannibal voice, the Hello Clarice, <laughs> Good night, children. Yeah, that'd work. 
nightmares for days. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I do want to add is that, like, I enjoy originally the idea with this is Bert is singing all very, and it's Steve takes this part, all the depressing or really downtrodden and or or everyday L words. Mundane. Or, <laughs> mundane, thank you, yes. Versus Ed takes Ernie's part, which is all the lovely lilting words and the uplifting words. <laughs> and I and I always like that personality play that they, they did, the Albert, Abbott and Costello type thing with, with Bert and Ernie. And I love that Stephen and Ed decided to continue that with this song. And I would say Stephen and Ed even did it better than Bert and Ernie with their acting on this song. I like the way that they just fully commit to this piece. Yes, they did. I liked how they had the different personalities Mm -hmm. taking different aspects of of the song. Absolutely. Of uh, different words. I mean, who who other than Steve can just burst out operatically about linoleum? That is true. (laughs) Only Steve. And it sounds amazing. I'm like, he sounds so happy to sing about linoleum. I I redid my kitchen just because of that. (laughs) This is good material. I got to put this down. I did not think of uh, linoleum as one of those L words are right up there. But now it is for me. (laughs) Along with lemons. Yes. Well, everybody likes lemons. I like lemons. I I can't listen to the song without drinking a limoncello. Those are yummy. You just have to have, like, a a stock on hand, just in case this song pops up. Yeah. No, pause it. I got to go make a lip show. Speaking of which, I brought for everyone to know. (laughs) Nice. Excellent. Is mine in the mail? Yes. Can you email it? frozen by the time it gets here. It's so cold. (laughs) Oh, frozen limoncellos are okay. It wouldn't be slush, though. It'd just be a block of ice. It's called (laughs) Italian uh, ice. It, it, in American measuring units, it's minus 14. Oh. <laughs> or, or colder. Oh. We're getting boy. wind chills that are probably pushing your minus 20. It's a really good thing that you guys have moved past outhouses. Yeah. 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 We, we, got, we got electric heaters in our igloos now. <laughs> that's, that's progress. Electric? It's, it's troublesome. We had to figure out how to stop them from melting first. So you probably have a, a moose on like a big conveyor wheel yeah the moose goes in a circle <clears throat> yep and that generates the uh the heat in the radiator I and I, I knew it solar solar sun so no no Stop. it's not solar if a moose generates the electricity it's it's in conjuncture conjunction unless they only walk around during its daylight hours then it's solar well if the moose is mooning i'm not a scientist the solar panel <laughs> <laughs> Eric's, Eric's default. I'm not a scientist. Then, <laughs> then, then, then I'll, I'll. Devin's jokes are too down weird. The moose. <laughs> no, I'm going to have to come and visit your your neck of the woods. It's on my to do list. Yeah, maybe not in winter, but come in summer. <laughs> nah, who wants to go in summertime? There's no bears. <laughs> no, that's when they're no, 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 no. The bear song is later. We cover. We cover. A, the bear song in a few weeks. <clears throat> gotcha. Yeah. We're discussing the lemon when song. When I met tonight. a bear. Yeah, kid, kid song about one one day I met a bear. But tonight, one day lemons. I met a bear. No oh, lemons. Back to lemons. lemons. Back to lemons. Yeah, I I like the song. I, I thought it was great for kids, and yeah, I didn't know it was a part of Sesame Street. The only thing I didn't like is like um. Someone left me this L, and I don't know what to do with it. Well, why don't you put it on the middle of your forehead? I I get the reference, but that's mean. That, that's that mean is, for a that's, kid's joke. That's why, that's why he goes on to say, I, I'm just kidding. I don't know why he says it's not his L, as though that would be why he, it's just kidding. If it was <laughs> his L, it would have to go on Steven's forehead. Well, if he's kidding, he shouldn't even have it on there. Well, it's not his L. It's Bert and Ernie's L. So... I'm curious to find out you guys' opinion. If you guys had an L, what word would you make with the L? I have like an automatic, my mind can't not say lesbian <gasps> because of 
Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, at one point, Scott is told that he needs to break out the L word. Lesbian? The other L word, Scott. Lesbians? <laughs> That's always the L word to me. What was the other L word? Oh, that one was meant to be love. <laughs> oh, love. Oh. <laughs> at, wow. at which point later on in the movie, uh, Scott proceeds to get it wrong, in which he says, I'm in lesbians with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in lesbians with you. <laughs> I would say my L word would be lobotomy. <laughs> yes, children, let's teach you about lobotomies today. I Well, I mean... Lesbians, lobotomy. We get darker in this song, so lobotomy could go in there because we 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 do discuss leukemia in this song. <laughs> I want one, and I still haven't found anybody who can give one to me for free. So <laughs> come to Canada. <laughs> come to Canada if we if we call it healthcare, it's free. <laughs> oh. It might work. All I have to do is talk to them, and they'd be like, "Yep, he qualifies." <laughs> This will improve his part of life. I'd be like, here's the podcast I'm on. Yes, yes, yep. He definitely, yep. He's candidate. I think we'd have to somehow validate it as being healthcare, but. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, if they met Stefan. (laughs) Healthcare's progressed a bit since then. Well, there's healthcare that doesn't apply just to me. It might apply to other people. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody else's mental healthcare. (laughs) For everybody else to be healthy. I think they're already doing that. They're keeping you out of Canada. In case you can't see around me, I'm in my closet. So that's my safe place. <laughs> the safe, quiet place. Yeah. So I, I do want to point out rather interestingly that last weekend, and this is going to date the podcast a little bit, but last weekend, Stephen was doing his Stephen Live from Home concerts, and he did an alphabetical concert, 26 songs alphabetically. This was not one of them. I, I I was really hopeful that it would be. King of Bedside Manor was. Um, but La 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 Lemon did not make it on onto his list. It didn't make the cut, huh? I think he did Lovers in a Dangerous Time. What did he do for Zed? Zed, he did Zion Wilson. He, he cheated. <laughs> that explains it. I was looking at the set list and I thought it was Brian Wilson with really bad handwriting. <laughs> and he even made up a song for X. So, Xarimba or something, right? Yeah, Xylorimba. Xyrimba. Xylorimba. <laughs> or Z- Zumba. Which I then wrote to him and said, well, I need now to learn this song, and now I have to put another song on our podcast. Thank you so much. Oh, well, man. That's a, that's a Steven song, so that's on your next podcast. That's You've on, got time. That's on the follow-up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you got time to figure that one out. That's only going to be another five years. Well, well, I like the song. Sorry for getting back onto the song topic. I like uh, I like the wor- how they use lamp post in there. Lemon <laughs> light bulb lamp post. Lump in my oatmeal. I I agree. Like I, it's a fun song. I first heard it this year, or well, no, it would have been last year because now we're twenty twenty one. Um, it was last year, and I was cruising through the list that you sent me of the songs on the podcast. And I said, what is this song? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did that with multiple songs, but this one, I, I went and gave it a listen and I like it. <laughs> it's, I, I've put it in my playlists. <laughs> I, I really like the, the rhyme that is uh, for words like licorice and lace, the L lights up your face. Mm-hmm. I, I really like that. I thought that was kind of clever and nice. Great job not writing that B&L. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> I well, I never even knew until today that this was a Sesame Street thing. So I thought this was a Stephen and Ed song. And it sounds like a Stephen and Ed song. It sounds exactly oh, yeah. like something you'd get from them, whether it was made up on the spot in a show or yeah. tossed into a an album as a fun little filler one that didn't take them too much effort to have to come up with. It, it sounds like a Stephen and Ed song. So it's perfect that they have it. Well, I wonder yeah. how much this song inspired crazy ABCs because it, there is a very similar soundness to that. Um, not just the music, but just the idea of like, let's come up with these crazy words. Bizarre words that you're not going to automatically think of with that letter. Exactly. 
it may sound bad, but I actually like the very end, Kevin very quietly calling out leukemia. I, I, I know that it sounds bad to say I like that, but I, I no. like the fact that it's in this song. If it had been anyone else, I wouldn't have liked it, but Kevin saying it like gives it power, and I like that. Gives it power in a very, very quiet tail end fading out. <laughs> it's still got like just this little power of like la 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 lump in my oatmeal la 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 leukemia it happened to me what it, I, i've i like the intro the the addition the introduction of that i must have missed that it's very soft it's right at the very final second or two and it's so so quiet you have to turn your volume up to hear it Oh and, wow! And they could have chosen to cut that out, but they didn't. They decided to keep it in there, and I like that. Yeah, and it's done in the same style as linoleum. Yeah, they just keep it, it in there. It's and just... done in the same style. <laughs> huh. It's like, yeah, I got an L word for you. <laughs> <laughs> Lamp post this, pal. <laughs> this would be 2002, so he would have just defeated it. Like he would have just come back from that. Oh, he had it. Just been in remission. Yeah. Yes. No king. Twice. Twice, right? Because he he. It would have been the first re- the first remission. It would have been the first time because I was post stunt. Yeah. So Kevin had leukemia. Yeah. Twice. No kidding. He is wow. two times yeah. survivor. Which is which is yeah. why yeah. I like that he says the word, like the fact that he's like, yeah. no, I'm not. This did not conquer me, and I'm going to throw it out there and and take power over it. Like I I really like yeah. that. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that changes things. I thought it was random. He's He's got a few songs. Well, he's got a couple songs also that deal with it. Not even on H-Wing, but in the B&L catalog. <laughs> Hidden Sun, <son>, maybe? <laughs> Tired of fighting with you. I don't have much more to add about this song. There's not a lot to add about it. I wanted to make some jokes about the the depth and how deep this song goes with the meaning of the lyrics, but <laughs> I can't so, even fake it. Eric, they mentioned lollipop. What do you think is the subconscious meaning behind that word? Uh, candy. Is it teaching these young children behaviors that they shouldn't be learning at such an age? No, I thought you were going for word association. Candy. Exactly. Maybe they're teaching children to go for people who have candy. Mm. Oh, get in the van. Exactly. That's Free very candy. Deep. That's very deep, Eric. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm sure the listeners will be fascinated by that. I'm glad I've got you here, Stefan. <laughs> I'm not sarcastic. <laughs> no. Sarcasm? What's that? <laughs> it's just another word of saying genius. <laughs> I think when it comes to cho- like they had to choose a Sesame Street song, and I think this was a really great one for them to choose because of the dual, well, the duality, but differently, like the D-U-E-L duality of this song where they're back and forth thing and you have that, you, the character comparison and it actually really fits because, you know, Ed is known as the really happy one of the group versus Steve who sings the really sad, depressing and self-deprecating songs of the group. The Bert and Ernie, Ed and Steve, it's just such a great parallel. Yeah. To just like two two characters that just play off each other so well and just you can't have one without the other. Or, well, I mean, <laughs> technically you can. But, it's just not as good. But there's always a certain magic with, with the two of them. Well, I think that what they really need is a little more banjo. Christopher, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Thank you. So if it's about dueling, they should have banjos. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that one. I, I missed it. I, I, I not only missed that bus, <laughs> but I'm five minutes late on it. <laughs> That's okay. You're just waving at it going by in the distance. That's okay. It's easy for you to miss it. You were on the short bus. <laughs> It's gone in the blink of an eye. <laughs> that hurts coming from you, buddy. <laughs> I know. We both went to the same college. <laughs> this is getting personal. 
<laughs> and we got there the same way. The short who's <laughs> who's giving who that L for the forehead right now? <laughs> Can I give it in mirror? Can I give it so it reflects back it's at gotta me? It's got to be right for someone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my golly god! Well, we should we should put some numbers to this. Um, oh yes. Hmm. What are we going to go for a ranking on this one? We have too many words to pick from this week. Um, K-I-S-S. I mean, lemon's the easy one. I don't want to go with lemon. How about how many linoleums? Well, I, I guess we could go with linoleum. That is an amazing word. It is. How about leukemias? I, I wouldn't no, feel right that giving one. it leukemia, leukemias. Like exactly. <laughs> that would just... I, I, would, I would give it two, at least. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 that was bad. Or lampposts or something like that. I like lamppost. Lamppost. Okay, we'll go with lampposts. How many lampposts nice. do you give this song? Well, Alex, I would give this song. It's a simple song. Very simple. It's for kids. Is it on my playlist? No. Uh, so let's go with an average of 2.5. Okay. It's average. Why not, huh? <laughs> I wouldn't listen to it myself. I would come up with all kinds of other L words. Not a fan, are you? Eh, not a big fan. But I mean, for a kid's song, it's perfect. I mean, two and a half, that is smack dab, middle of the road, average. So it's average, yeah. It's not a bad score. No, no. So those of you out there thinking it is, I've got news for you. It's average. I like that they go in to repeat it afterwards like in the background as an echo as they're mm-hmm. leaving versus just ending the song like that that's a nice little addition yeah as that little outro they actually they do that in uh, like the Muppet show quite a bit you know they do but they don't do it with this song with like Menomina the guy like literally <laughs> goes back <laughs> Menomina. Menomina. well and we know yeah. that they're big big Sesame Street fans because one of the things they did on all their Maroon Tours was near and far. I mean, that was a that was a staple of their manure manure tour. Their maroon tour. But maroon. Their manure tour. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel about their tour, Tracy. <laughs> that that was the first show I ever saw. <laughs> the manure tour? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How did it smell? Uh smelled like peaches and cream. <laughs> Fantastic. I bet you saw a lot of piles there. So, Eric, how many lampposts do you give this song? I've heard you guys often uh, rate... Do you you rate children's songs kind of on their own scale, or do you rate them with the other catalog? I kind of just rate all songs based on... It's a song that was produced and put out, and whether or not I like it or not. Mm -hmm. And I like this song. I have routinely sought it out since I first heard it. It just brings me great joy to sing along with it. I don't think I ever heard it on Sesame Street. Um, So it's not bringing back any nostalgia or anything. It's just as a fully grown adult, I enjoy this song quite a lot. You find it Um, lovely, do you? I do find it lovely. Does it make you laugh? uh, uh, Yes, it makes me laugh. What are some other L words there, Stefan? Nice L words. You're welcome. Licorice. Yeah. Okay. That's that's. Yeah. No, I don't really like licorice. Does it that inspire much. you to wear your lace? <laughs> However, if I'm putting this song as, <laughs> I was kind of ignore that, but I can't. Um, <laughs> as a song, when you just put it for what it's worth and what it is, and the musicality behind it and the lyrics. You know, it's not a complex song. It's not a deep song, but it's a fun song. So I've got to give it a good score and I'm going to put it three, seven, five. All right. That's a pretty good score. Yeah. I can't, I can't <laughs> rank it up with my fours and fives because those are, I mean, I mean where most of their catalog sits for me in four, <laughs> four up to five, but <laughs> This is by no means a bad song. It's by no means a song I don't like in any way, shape, or form. I think it's great. Now, now, some of you, before I give my rating, you're going to want to plug your ears and go la, 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 la for a moment because I'm going to now sound really boring for the next two minutes because I'm going to read uh, Aaron's review of this song. Oh, I thought you were going to sing. Oh, that's that too, yes, but I'm not going to do that to you. Okay, good. Aaron's, Aaron's thoughts on the song. 
La, 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 lemon. Tempo was right around 63 beats per minute. Key of E minor. Uh, it's in the key of B of E flat. And the intro sits in E flat. The verse goes E flat, C to B flat right away. And this chord progression and the bowed bass, which is lovely, by the way, makes me think of the me meow mix jingle. I we didn't even catch on that, but yes, I totally that that's right. Yep. That's not a value statement. I don't mean anything deep by it. It doesn't make the song bad or good in and of itself, but I cannot not hear it now. Anyway, E flat to C to B flat back to E flat. Uh, the talking interlude sits in E flat until the very end before the turnaround where it jumps back to B flat and then back to E flat, B flat, E flat. The bridge is A flat, D flat, A flat, E flat, A flat, E flat, C7, F7, D flat, E flat, F minor 7. Holy moly. Aaron was not kidding this week when he said that this was a complicated song for him to break down. Um, <laughs> poor guy. That surprises me on the heels of King of Bedside Manor. I know. We went from... You'd think one was more complicated. <laughs> Did he get his notes backwards? No. <laughs> and he was he was like, I am angry with you this week, Tracy. You, gave, you said this was going to be an easy week for me. Sorry, Aaron. So he said the ending it, with that same familiar turnaround of B flat to E flat outro, verse changes E flat B flat A flat, and for the form we have intro. She said he says so. Pardon this breakdown for being a little la 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 lazy, but there's only so much we can break down here. I don't think that's lazy at all. Holy cow, he he broke that down a lot more than I thought he would have to. It still has its charm and is. Primarily the la 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 lovely bowed bass and the frenetic and frankly a little weird bridge, which was a welcome surprise, and the general tone and humor of the song. It reminds me of the educational song by Tom Lear, who wrote for the Electric Company, for example, the song Silent E. <clears throat> and he says, Is he related to King Lear? <laughs> he says, That's a good thing if you were wondering. I can't hate on this. I am still never going to love kids' songs as much as the darker and more mature, mature material. But of children's songs that we've heard so far, this song is actually amongst my favorites. Lyrics, not much to say about the lyrics, except, except they're edumacational to a certain extent. And, and funny enough that he thinks that they would keep the attention of the children listening. If I had kids, I would probably play this song for them to accentuate discussion about the alphabet. It's harmless fun that made me smile. Like I said, I can't hate on it. So he gives this song a 3.2. Wow. Nice. Good for him. For me, I really like this song. Um, I'm going to put the kids' thoughts in here because this is a kid's song. Even though it's not on the kids' album, it's for, on an album called For the Kids. Okay, Bella, so tell me what you thought of the song La 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 Lemon. Well, whenever I came to Lemon, I, was, I told my dad, Hey, speaking of lemon, can I have a lemon? <laughs> and I also liked that it had a lot of jokes in it. Were there any parts of the song you didn't enjoy? Mm, not really. Now, they didn't really write this song. They just did a cover of it. So how many lamp posts, zero to five, do you give this song? I give it three and a half. All right. Thank you, Bella. Okay, Benjamin. So what did you think of La 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 Lemon? I thought that it was not very good, but it was still good. Okay. Can you, can you explain more what you mean? The melody was good, but the lyrics weren't really weren't. What did you not like about the la-la-la-la lyrics? Pretty much everything. Okay. Were there any things that you did like about it? Yes. When he said, you can put it on your forehead. One thing. Okay. So, zero to five, how many lamp posts would you give this song? Two and a half. 
So my personal thoughts, I really like this song. It's enjoyable. Even as an adult, like you were saying, Eric, I can still love this song. And for me, it does bring back the nostalgia of, of having seen it on Sesame Street. But I like that Stephen and Ed actually took it that extra part forward and even made it very dramatic when he, they were reading it um, and stayed with the comedy at the same time. I'm going to give this a 3.5. Nice. I feel like a loser. You're not. I know. We all love you. We all like you. Oh. We all love you. Oh, we all... thank you. L, L something else. But we're we're, we're going to go from one L song to another. We're going to go from another really rare song to another really rare song that maybe you've never even heard before, Eric. Next week, yeah. we're going to come back and we're going to be discussing laser team the theme song from the movie laser team i was on a laser tag team once <laughs> you were? were you i mean it wasn't a, a league or anything i just went with some friends and we were on a team <laughs> ah. you had me interested there for a minute i was like wait they have leagues they, what, what is this oh i bet they do i bet they do that would be amazing i was completely surprised they had lasers up in canada they're more like glowy lights. <laughs> oh, like Christmas lights. Yeah, it's late. Give him a break. There's an L word for you, late. <laughs> Stefan can't, Stephen can't do, be expected to keep too much up. The other word for late is pregnant. That's true, but that's not an L word. No, that song oh. comes much later. That's, that's She's on no. Time. That's not late, though, Tracy. <laughs> That's on time. That's on, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, same idea around pregnancy. Yeah. We're... I'm late. No, you're right on time. No, I'm late. <laughs> A wizard is never late. <laughs> uh, well, gentlemen, I do have to, to hang up. I do have to go and put this into the bank and get some sleep before I got to go to work again in the morning. Hopefully you can collect some good interest. Put it in the sperm bank. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thanks, that was fun. Don't forget, no regrets. Except maybe one. I noticed how you just stopped on ladies. You're like pausing on ladies. <laughs> You're way too ladies. much into the song. Hello, ladies. If any ladies out there like my voice, feel free to email Tracy. And Bare Naked ABC's After Dark starts right now. <laughs> I'm not the Tom Jones you'll find next door. <laughs> I might be a little bit better. He is next door, though, hiding in the hedges with the binoculars. <laughs> I sure am. We should all talk in the Muppet voice. <laughs> That's Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> Same difference. Can you do Bert or Ernie? See you, Bert. How do you do, Bert? <laughs> what do you want, Ernie? Oh, that's pretty good. Well, I just wanted to say you have a unibrow. Uh, that one. Oh. <laughs> I don't know Bert's voice at all, apparently. <laughs> or it could I don't just be kids, I'm doing so... it really badly. <laughs> No, uh, Stefan said it was pretty good. I don't have kids, so I haven't heard Sesame Street voices <laughs> since I was a kid. To celebrate joining Pantheon Podcasts, Rock Camp, the podcast, the official podcast of Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, is giving away a guitar signed by Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater, Marty Friedman, formerly of Megadeth, and legendary shredder Zach Wild, plus our rock star counselors like Vinny Apice, Monty Pittman, and more. To enter to win, simply follow, rate, and review our podcast on your preferred platform, and that's all you have to do. For more information, go to rockcamp.com forward slash podcast.